My name is Gilberto. I'm a developer advocate at Snowflake. Um, and in this lightning talk, I'm going to be chatting about how you can build Gen AI apps using models like Llama 2 um, directly in Snowflake, so directly in your Snowflake account. And so as part of, you know, with all the rage and frenzy around generative AI, we get a lot of questions from developers who want to be able to speak to their data that's in Snowflake in natural language. And then as part of those conversations, we see a lot of different approaches too. Um, on one hand, you have folks and teams who want a fully custom setup, meaning they want to be able to train their own model, run it on the super high-powered compute that's in Snowflake, and then use that model to talk to the data that's in their Snowflake environment. And then on the other hand, you have teams who are completely comfortable with bringing a third-party LLM, maybe one of the ones that's not already natively hosted in Snowflake, um, and then using that third-party LLM to go ahead and talk to their data in their Snowflake environment. And so both of these approaches are already fully supported today for teams who are interested in approaches in that way. And so the way those are supported is with Snowpark Container Services. Um, and with Snowpark Container Services, basically anything that can be represented by a container image, um, basically anything that can run in a container can run in your Snowflake environment. And when I say anything, I really mean anything. So this is a screenshot of uh, my coworker Jake, who found like a Doom image online, and then he loaded up into uh, a Snowpark container, and then was playing Doom in his Snowflake account. So, uh, coming soon, Snowflake the gaming platform. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the high-level workflow for using Snowpark container services looks something like this, where if you have an image, you can pull that image, say from an image registry, using either SQL, the Snowflake CLI the Snowflake Python APIs, and then you spin up what we call uh, a compute pool. So that's the blue box that you see on the right. And then in that compute pool, you would run either a job, a service function, or a service. And the service would accept a spec file that's uh, defined in YAML, so it's just defining what the service is actually going to be. You might also pass in, say, uh, information around the image, or where to find it, that kind of thing. So this is like the high level flow. And then here are some super quick code snippets on practically and tactically what this looks like. So um, in this case, these are all in SQL, but you can actually do this all in Python now using Snowflake's Python APIs. And so a couple of things here, creating my compute pool at the top, right? And I specify the num number of nodes that I want here, a min and a max. So that's for scaling purposes. And the cool thing about the compute pools is that they have access to super high powered NVIDIA GPUs. And so what you can do here is just say, hey, I want to use GPUs, right? And you would be using NVIDIA's GPUs. And then down here, I have a, a snippet where I'm creating the service. And it's similar to um, what we did with the compute pool in terms of being able to scale. We specify a minimum number of instances, a maximum number of instances. The compute pool that it's going to run on top of, on top of. so here we see my CPL, my CPL. And then a path to the spec that I mentioned uh, contains a service definition. All right, so um, I mentioned, right, if, if you are a team that um, wants to do a fully custom setup or wants to bring in a third-party LLM and use Snowpark Container Services to do that, completely supported today out of the box. Um, one thing that we, we see is uh, there are other teams that approach us and say, this is all great and well, but frankly, we don't have the time to uh, have to deal with all things around um, containers, images, compute pools, that sort of thing. We want something that um, abstracts this away and makes it easier to use. And the good news is that with Snowflake Cortex, a lot of what I am just uh, what what I just described is being abstracted into a way into simple to use SQL functions. And so, Snowflake Cortex is like the broader term for a set of LLM and ML powered features from Snowflake. Um, I like to think about it in kind of three buckets. Um, there are LLM based SQL functions. And when I say SQL functions, I mean like a single line of SQL that you run in your Snowflake worksheet that invokes an LLM under the hood. So there's the LLM-based functions. There are uh, ML-powered functions. So if you're doing things like time series forecasting, you invoke the corresponding ML function, you pass in the right data, that'll invoke a machine learning model under the hood. Uh, and then what's not shown on here, um, there's actually a couple of uh, features in Snowflake, so product features that are built on top of Cortex. And so there are features in Snowflake that use 
snowflake uh, cortex under the hood, which I find pretty neat. So in this lightning talk, I'm going to be talking about the LLM functions that are available to you um, in Snowflake Cortex. So with that, I just want to dive into this super quick five-minute um, demo of me showing Snowflake Cortex. So the first thing I'll do here is I'm going to call the translate function. So again, a single line of SQL in my Snowflake environment. I'm just going to translate this uh, string that's in German to English. And if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that it'll translate it. And I'm assuming that is a, the correct translation uh, from German to English. So how are you today? Um, but really, the power of Cortex shines um, when you are scaling Cortex. And so what I've done here is in this other tab that says load call transcript data, I've already loaded a bunch of like mock call transcript data. Um, I have a database and a table that has a bunch of these transcripts that are in German. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I, I can translate all those at scale using the same translate function. So I'll go ahead and run that. And this will take uh, a few seconds. But you'll see that the output at the bottom will have two columns. So I have the, trans the original transcript on the left. And then on the right, I have the, transla the translated uh, version of that transcript. But translating is, is not the only thing that this can do. Um, you can also derive sentiment from strings. So what I'm doing here is deriving sentiment for transcripts. So you see here on the right, a sentiment value that's going to be in between the range of negative 1 and 1, negative 1 being the most negative sentiment, 1 being the most positive. And then if I don't want to read any of these transcripts, I can ask Cortex to summarize it for me. So here I'm going to um, ask Cortex to summarize one of these transcripts. I'll return it. And so you see here, uh, transcript on the left and the summary on the right. Cool. So what I just showed are, are three simple to use functions, translate, sentiment, and summarize. At this point, you're probably wondering, where's the llama 2 that, that he promised us in this lightning talk? Um, and so I'm going to show, show that um, in this next function. So it's called uh, cortex complete. So it's a complete function. And basically what I can do is I can invoke one of the supported um, LLMs. Um, here I'm using llama 2. And then do a bit of prompt engineering and use that against my data. And so here you see me setting a very simple prompt where I say, summarize this transcript, less than 200 words, return a JSON object that contains the product name, the defect, and a summary. And then I have these other functions just for the purposes of demonstration. I'm not going to run them. But first, let me run line 48 here. So I'm going to run Cortex Complete. I'm invoking Llama 2. And you see here's that summary. And what I've returned here is a JSON object that has the product, the defect, and the summary. And you saw that I invoked, I called Llama2, I passed in my prompt, and then I ran it against my data. And then here are the other three functions at the very bottom where um, it's the same exact thing, but you can see how I am uh, I could invoke Mixtral, Mistral, or Gamma if I wanted to. All right, so individually, these four functions are pretty neat, pretty powerful, but much like the uh, Captain Planet kids, their, their power is really shy when you put them together. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bundle these in an application. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Streamlit application directly in my Snowflake environment. If, not, if you're not familiar with Streamlit, super powerful open source Python library for building uh, really beautiful data apps. Uh, no HTML or CSS or any of that stuff required. It's 100% pure Python. And so what I've done here is I've already booted up the app. This is in my Snowflake account. Right? And this entire front end is built with Streamlit. And all I'm doing this application is um, making Cortex even easier to use by slapping a front end and a UI onto it. So what I have here on the left, right, just a drop down where I can invoke those functions that I showed uh, in the worksheet just now. So translate, sentiment analysis, and JSON summary. And then I have these forms on the right that correspond to, to the experience here. So we can start by invoking the translate function here. And I'm going to translate from English to Spanish. I'm going to type in something like, you know, I love Data Council Austin. And then I will go ahead and hit enter. And you see the translation, me encanta el data council, Austin. And rest assured, I can confirm that is the correct translation. All right, the uh, other thing that I can show you here is I'm just going to quickly go to this drop down. Now choose sentiment analysis. I can type in the same thing. And if I hit enter, I'll get my, my value, 0. 0.6776. That's a little low for me. I'm, I'm closer to a 1. Um, but hey, I'll take that. And then the last one here is um, the uh, JSON summary. And so this kind of persists a string. And 
<gasps> you know, it fails. And that's because in this app, um, I'm not handling this exclamation point quite gracefully. But if I just remove that and I run this, you'll see that at the very bottom, I will get the JSON object that we saw um, in, the, in the output earlier. So the product name, the defect, the summary, it's saying something about how the author is expressing their love for Data Council Austin. Learned a lot, met a lot of interesting people, can confirm that is all true. Cool. All right, so um, we went from, you know, in 10 minutes, a lot of unstructured call transcript data to using Cortex as the LLM service, and then using Streamlit to kind of slap a front end onto that and present it as, as an application. And uh, what I, I find to be the most phenomenal thing about this is not just how easy it is to use Cortex, but um, how just about anyone who is interested in using LLMs against their data in Snowflake, anyone can use it now. So these LLMs are more widely accessible, easy to use, um, and super fun to use as well. All right, um, that's the demo. A couple of things uh, before I head out here is um, I just wanted to call out this blog post if you're interested in learning more behind the demo um, that my colleague Dash Desai wrote. It uh, talks a little bit more about what I covered today. This you can find on Snowflake's Medium publication. And then last but certainly not least, if you are going to be in the Bay Area on June 6th, I would love to invite you to Snowflake's Dev Day, which is going to be the first time ever that we host a Dev Day. My team, actually, Developer Relations, is putting it on. It is going to be completely free for anyone to attend. And this is part of, this is the last day of the Snowflake Summit Annual Conference. So, um, if you're there, would love, would love to see you, would love to meet you, and, and just chat about all the things that you're doing with your data. All right, that wraps it up for me. My name is Gilberto again. Uh, thank you very much.